You hungry? Hey, Ma! Can we get some meatloaf? This has like a mom's basement kind of feel. Mom! 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 Still some stuff in the basement. What basement? Mom's basement with Joe Frank. That is quite possibly the dumbest thing I think you've ever said. And Corey Diab. I can't believe I take part in this show. year once again baseball is on the horizon we're only what 19 days away correct 19 days away i just did the math in my head correctly verified by mom's basement official mathematician Corey diop and by the way if you're if you don't know where you are this is mom's basement here on itunes and youtube wow it's really okay what just i felt like the intro should have been first no we're trying something different this week as always i'm your host joe with me Corey. so this is gonna be the mlb preview show Sponsored by Mom's Basement and sponsored by Kevin Liquors and Homer Glenn Everyday Low right, Prices. Wait, 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 I don't think you can do that. Why is the show sponsoring itself? The, the show is sponsored by us because I said so. Kevin Liquors, Homer Glenn also jumping in, sponsoring the MLB preview show. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. I'm the CEO of the company. Also, Matt's here if you guys can. Uh, Matt producing the show behind the camera, sitting directly to the left. I'm really just watching porn, if I'm being honest with Whoa. you. Whoa! Nope, don't like that. Uh, if there's a slight echo to this, if there's a slight echo to this week's episode, we're working on soundproof in the new studio. Bear with us. I hung up a bunch of foam because they waited for the music guy. Listen to do it before he got here. So let me give you the rundown here. I bought this shit on like Wednesday. It got here, and I called Matt today. I was like, yo, Matt, how do I hang this stuff up? He's like, uh, you know, command strips maybe, some nails. I'm like, well, that's not going to work. These are not my walls. I'm not nailing fucking foam into the walls. So I hang them up with some command strips. Matt wasn't here. He was out driving, whatever he's doing. He got here after the fact. I'm out of command strips now. So now Matt, of course, is going to come in and critique the job that I did. The color scheme looks phenomenal. I, okay, I'll give you that. Like, can, we, can, we, can we get some comments on the color scheme of the soundproof? Don't, don't touch right the camera. No, nope, bad that. idea. Uh, Corey, <laughs> thoughts on the color scheme of the soundproof? I thought I was coming here to talk about sports. And I'm asking for your opinion. No, Segway. No, I'm talking about some colors, and I'm talking about, well, no, now I'm thinking about Matt watching porn. Well, you're not colorblind, you're not asking. Well, to be so. fair, pre-gaming you were watching fucking Negan clips. So I, I was, mean. I was watching The Walking Dead. Regardless, we have a sports show to do. Thoughts on the color? I'm not getting off this. It's red and black, that's dope. Do you like it? I just said it's dope. Okay, that's all I need. Alright, <laughs> segueing now. We're gonna do American League first. We're gonna go East, Central, West. Same in the National League. This is either gonna be one episode for the American League, or... Both leagues in one haven't really decided yet. We're going to play it by ear. But American League starting it off in the AL East, the Boston Red Sox. Let's start off with them, Corey. Thoughts on Boston? I mean, they're going to finish second. You know, they don't have pitching beyond Chris Sale. Chris Sale gets burned out every year. Uh, you know, they went after the wrong position this offseason when they uh, went after J.D. Martinez. You know, they could have given money to Jake Arrieta or Hugh Darvish. But instead, they go after an outfielder when they have a pretty damn good outfield. I think they should have gone after two starting pitchers, whether it was Darvish and Arietta or Arietta and a guy like Lance Lynn, who we'll get into just signing today in Minnesota. But, you know, the high-tier guy and then the middle-tier guy, because their rotation is flat out. It's garbage. I mean, Chris Sale, he's the winner of the first half Cy Young Award, quote-unquote, every year. You know, he'll go out in the first half. No, the first half, we say that until the All-Star break. He'll go out and win 10, 11 games. And then come second half, he just can't take it. Now, he says this year he's taking it easy. He's pitching to get to Game 7 of the World Series. Now, listen, to get to Game 7 of the World Series, you got to win a lot of games in the regular season and have to pitch on three days rest in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Something you have to prove that you can do. So, Boston, we said it before, and Corey just said it. J.D. Martinez, wrong signing for you. You have a very, very deep plethora position player-wise. Like, you're, you're, you have a plethora of position players, especially in the outfield, with Bradley, Benatendi, Betts, Brock Holt. Four guys that can play the outfield very well. And they, and they hold their own offensively, especially Ben Attendee and Mookie Betts, with Jack and Bradley lagging a little bit behind. But their rotation is bad. David Price is going to be the X Factor. Can he come back and be a dominant force? I don't think he can. I think he is done. His career is on the tailspin. It's, he's out of his prime. 
Are they going to move him to the bullpen? I think, I mean, God, that's an expensive bullpen piece. What does he make? He's a, he has a seven-year, $210 million contract, so he makes $30 million a year. Yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to come in second in this division, and we're going to talk about the team that's going to come in first. Obviously, if you don't know it, spoiler alert, it's the New York Yankees. The one thing I want the other thing I want to talk about with Boston, new manager. John Farrell out. He did win a World Series in Boston. He's now out. Alex Cora steps in. This is a manager that I, I really like. Alex Cora has been trying to get a manager job for a long time. He managed Puerto Rico in the WBC. Mm-hmm. He was bench coach for the World Series winning Astros last year. That's the favorite. That's the best part for me. He's been a coach on a winning team, learning from A.J. Hinge. He also was in the finals of the World Baseball Classic as the manager for Puerto Rico. A lot of experience coaching, a lot of experience winning, something that the Yankees' new manager does not have from a coaching standpoint. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, uh, I don't believe that his experience is going to, you know, make up for the talent deficiencies in the rotation, but, you know, he's been there, he's done that, you know, he's done that with a winning team, he sees what a winning culture is like, you know, uh, the, the Red Sox are going to need every bit of, you know, scheming that he can do for them, uh, especially on the starting rotation-wise, if they have any chance to take the, the division away from the Yankees. Another thing, just on, like Dave Dombrowski, he will go out and get a piece, if need be. He will spend whatever it takes. I mean, we've seen it in the past in Detroit, and the and kind of toll it can take on an organization. We saw it when he traded Moncada and Kopech to get Chris Sale. Mm-hmm. If Boston feels like they're a piece short, which they definitely are, but come July, if they feel like they're one pitcher away, he will do whatever it takes to get the pitcher. And in, in their case, that's a good thing for them because, in my opinion, they need two pitchers. Going out and getting one could really help them make a run to the ALCS. Mm-hmm. Let's shift to the New York Yankees. Obviously, big offseason for them. The biggest acquisition being Giancarlo Stanton. Is it the right move to stack Stanton and Judge in the same outfield? Time will tell. They're going to be a terrible defensive outfield. Who cares? They're putting up 40 oh, bombs horrible. a piece. They're, doing, they're dropping 40 bombs a piece. And the thing, the thing, you know, Stanton, they got him for a steal, basically. Like, a great player, yeah, obviously. Bullshit trade. Right? A load of home runs last year. He's going to hit a ton this year. But Aaron Judge, big question mark. We've seen it time and time again. Players have a solid rookie year. They come in the sophomore slump, quote unquote. He, but he didn't have just a solid rookie year. He should have been MVP last and year. And he had a couple stretches last year where it just fell off. And the thing with me is, I could see it watching him play. Why are you throwing him fastballs at all? Period. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that because he strikes out so freaking often, especially on breaking pitches. But he still managed to get on base 44% of the time last year. That in that led the American League. I might have led baseball, but the dude just gets on base. He's a good baseball player. I mean, you got to you got to prove that you're able to hit the breaking pitches. I get that, but you know, I don't think he's going to take. I think he'll take a step, you know, a slight step back. I don't think he's going to be the MVP this year or anything like that, or the uh, the, the second runner up in the MVP. But you know, I think he's still a damn good baseball player, best corner outfielder probably. In the game, you, know? you have you have to adjust just as quickly as the pitchers are adjusting to you. And this I've, I've seen with Javier Baez, where basically if you're a pitcher, you should know how to get Javier Baez out. Throw him a high heat, high high and inside, mm-hmm. or throw him a slider in the left-handed batter's box. I mean, he's going to swing. He, if you throw him seven pitches, he's going to swing at three of them. Like it's just going to happen. It's just how it works. And Judge, I would do the same thing with sliders in the left-handed batter's box repeatedly. He's a little bit better at taking his walks, like you said. The on-base percentage is good, but. Mm-hmm. Either you're going to walk him, or I mean, you're you're basically taking the chance that he takes you out of the ballpark, out of the mm-hmm. equation. But in a lineup like that, he's protected. I mean, you got Gary Sanchez, like we said, you got John Carlos Nandini, or Gorius is a damn good hitter. Glaber Torres is going to be up, so that's a stacked lineup. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying we got to watch out for the, for the the sophomore slump, Aaron Judge. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to be as good as he was this year. I, I think he takes a pretty big step back. Still being a very good player, I'm going to say he takes a pretty big step back. Uh, a lot of that fan could go to a young kid's head, man. I mean, it's it's just you got to have a pitcher. You, I don't I don't think he's going to take a drastic step back because he's going to have protection in that lineup. I mean, versus lefties, he probably should hit lead off in that lineup. To be perfectly honest with you, just given how he gets on base, but he's got Giancarlo Stanton behind him protecting him, so they're not going to just walk him to put a guy on for Giancarlo Stanton because that that goes from you know a solo homer possibility to a two run bomb, you know, and that's just a rally that keeps going. So. You know, I think he's going to be one of the top players in the game. I just, you know, I don't 
you know, if he wins MVP, he's got to prove that he's got that um, he could adjust the pitchers adjusting to him. And the the piece of the puzzle that really sets the Yankees apart is the starting rotation. Their mm-hmm. starting rotation is far better than Boston's. It's much deeper. Yeah, deeper as well. I mean, if Severino has another year like he did last year and really solidifies the ace role for the Yankees with Tanaka as a two and Sonny Gray as a number three, who was an ace in Oakland for five years, really. I mean, it's just insane. And CC Sabathia, who they brought back on a one-year contract here, coming off a very solid year last year, gets out of the rehab and all that, kind of learns how to pitch. Because CC, my childhood growing up, man, he was a, f- a fastball pitcher, a power left-handed arm who could just blow the ball by you. Crazy, crazy good stuff. Now he's had to reinvent himself, learn how to pitch finesse-wise, which is something that not everybody can go ahead and do. He, I think he has done that, and he, as a four-starter, pretty damn good. I think he can go out and win 14, 15 games you this know year. he's the ninth-highest paid player in baseball? Yeah, I think he's still, he, right now? Yeah. Well, he's on a one-year deal, is he not? It's a, uh, oh, wait, maybe I'm looking at something wrong. For that's got to be either career I, earnings or yeah, his that's, last that's, contract. That's earnings or Because his last he got contract. paid huge from the Yeah, he's making, t- he's making $10 million. Yeah, my that's... mistake, guys. Um, no, I mean, this is, I, this is entirely the Yankees division to lose. I think I saw something just based on... Uh, you know they did like they do advanced metrics. You can you can say what you want to say on advanced metrics in terms of baseball, but you know it's, there was something where like the, with the Yankees run differential that they should have been like a, a team that wins 105, 110 games last year. They just had some things not break their way, and I mean they just added Giancarlo Stanton to that mix. Yeah, I think they could be a team that wins 95, 98 games. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't be surprised if the Yankees went out with 100 games. To be yeah, be honest with you. Because if you look around the diamond, I don't see a lot of deficiencies. And they're going to get better. I mean, at some point, Ronald Torres, however you say his last name, is not playing second base. Yeah, it's going to be Torres. Torres, who, if you don't remember, is the Cubs' top prospect they traded to acquire Oldest Chapman in 2016. Mm-hmm. And the dude can ball, like, yeah. flat out. He might be the he might be the best player in that infield when he comes up. And, they, and then the, the talk going into next offseason, you know, it's going to be the Yankees and the White Sox and for Manny Machado, but... The Yankees might have a long-term answer at third base. You know, they have the, at Triple A Miguel Andujar, who is the number sixty-five prospect in all of baseball, and the dude just fucking rakes. And he's, he's hit like five hundred this spring training, and it's spring training for what it's worth. But you know, he got called up versus the White Sox as sort of like a like a trade showcase before the David Robertson Tommy Canley trade. He went four for four against the White Sox in his debut. I mean, this the guy can play, so they really don't have a weakness on their diamond right now. If Greg Bird's healthy. If Greg Bird's I mean, healthy. Because he, he just can't seem to stay healthy. He also can't hit left-handers. He'll be some wa- some somebody to watch this year. I mean, last year in spring training, Greg Bird was tearing up and then went out and got hurt immediately mm-hmm. in the regular season. So the Yankees, we talk about the depth and start rotation. <laughs> doesn't even come to fruition with the depth they have in the bullpen. Oh, yeah. By far the best bullpen in baseball. David Robertson, Adam Warren. You're welcome, guys. Chad Green, Aroldis Chapman, Dellen Batances. I mean, there's just depth and really good power arms for days, along with one of the best closers in baseball, if he can bounce back this year, Aroldis Chapman. Yeah, I mean, bullpens are pretty fickle. You know, you see the guys do really well one year, and then they, you know, they just can't adjust going into the next year. But the good thing for the Yankees is they have so many solid pieces with so many uh, solid track records, you know, with Chapman and... David Robertson has been solid in his career, and um, Chapman Batances. And then you have guys like Tommy Canley who still need to prove it uh, going forward. But, you know, it's the, it, they're, they're one of the best teams in baseball on paper. And, you know, you look at the Red Sox. The Red Sox are a really good team. I get that. But I think the gap between them is just ridiculously wide. Yeah. You know, I, I think the Red Sox, if the Red Sox win, say, like 90 games, I mean, the Yankees... I feel like are a team that should win 100 games. You know, they're just that good of a team. Can you remember a time in your lifetime where the Yankees and Red Sox both go into a season with new managers? Jesus. Um, no, I can't. I mean, the Yankees, Joe Girardi was there for 9 or 10 years. Now he's gone. Aaron Boone is the replacement. And I can't remember a time either in my lifetime that they both come in with new managers. Well, I mean, I remember growing up we had, you know, Joe Torre. Yeah, Joe Torre was, Joe was a staple, yeah, so... Yeah. Uh, but Joe, or Joe, like you said, Joe Girardi, out. Aaron Boone never coached a game of baseball in his life. Mm-hmm. Obviously, played professional baseball. Uh-huh. I I said it before. I'll say it again. I don't like the manager move. Joe Girardi. I think if, if Joe Girardi manages his team, I think they. I think they, I think he got a raw deal. I mean, oh yeah, it it was one of those things where like, well, it's time for change and all this bullshit. It, Joe Girardi's a damn good man. And it's not it's not like they underachieved last year. If anything, they, they overachieved. They overachieved. Hundred percent. You know, you you can say I, I don't think managers play that big of a role in baseball, but 
if you're a team that is really young like the Yankees are and they overachieved, like they're ahead of their rebuild timeline, why don't you keep the guy who, you know, coached them up, you know? Yeah. I, I don't I don't see it. But. They, they definitely overachieved last year. No one saw them going as, as deep into the playoffs as they did and fighting with the likes of the Indians and the Astros. They took, they took the Astros to Game 7 of the yeah. ALCS. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, if you... Now, if they if they win ninety five hundred games this year, people are gonna be like, Aaron Boone's done a great job. Aaron Boone didn't do shit. He was handed this team. You're hand, you're basically handed this team. It's how it's sort of how I felt on this. This is a larger scale, but um, compared to what the Cubs did. But when they brought in Joe Madden, I mean, Joe Madden's a solid manager and all that. But Joe Madden has proven to be uh, he makes these weird decisions when it comes to you know sitting certain players and whatnot. If you handed anybody that talented Cubs roster, they would win the same amount of games. I mean, I, I don't think Joe Madden is an overly good manager. Same like I don't think... Now, that's a different scale than the Aaron Boone. I think Aaron Boone's ridiculous as uh, as a new manager coming out. I don't know what you can give him credit for or anything like that. But, you know, managers don't play a big, por- big part in it, but Joe Girardi should still be the Yankees manager. And now to the rest of the division, there's really just a huge, huge drop-off here. That's why each one of these teams is probably going to win 90, 95 games, maybe yeah. more, because it, it just falls off. Let's go to Baltimore. They have absolutely no pitching. I mean, Bundy and Gossman are going to need to carry the rotation the entire season. It's just not plausible for them to do. Baltimore is like one of the bottom three organizations in baseball. They, 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 they didn't even go, they didn't even get a pitch ready for Shohei Otani. I don't know if you ever saw that. When he was a free agent, they didn't even get a pitch for him ready. Like, they were just like, no, nah, fuck it. So their acquisition of the rotation was Andrew Kashner. <laughs> That's not going to cut it. And you look around the, I mean, you look at guys that they're going to lose. After this Something season, Manny. you start with their best player, Machado. He's going to leave. Uh, Zach Britton, he's going to leave. Their manager, Buck Showalter, he's going to leave. You're just like, why are you smiling behind the camera? <laughs> All right, we're just going to move past this. Adam me? Jones, he's going to be on the way out. I mean, they're just going to lose everybody. This is a team that needs to realize where they're at. Their general manager, also in the last year of his contract, if you're him, if you want to save your job, what do you have to do? I mean, if you want to get a contract extension, what do you have to do? Because this team's not winning the division. You know, they, you, you know what you had to do was you needed to trade Manny Machado. You needed to trade all these pieces and actually start some sort of rebuild, build a farm up, because their farm isn't particularly good. I mean, they have a ton of power bats. Just, I mean, Machado, Chris Davis, Scope, Adam Jones. But a guy like Chris Davis with... Chris Davis isn't going to get you much on the on the trade market or anything like that. But First baseman almost never did. Never. But I mean, you have you have maybe the best third baseman in baseball who not, who's now playing shortstop in Manny Machado, and you had you had an opportunity to trade him. You were just like, nah, fuck it, we're not going to do that. We're going to ride out another 70, 75 win season with this team. I mean, it's they're they're not a good ball club, and they're one of the worst run teams in baseball. Yeah, I mean, they're going to lose everything. Either you trade you trade these guys off for whatever you can get, or you're going to lose everything. And you're going to be starting like they, they from honestly scratch. they honestly remind me of like a slightly worse version of the White Sox from you know start all the way up to like 2016. You know? Which is scary. Yeah, I mean, it's that they they have no farm. They have. They have no long-term pieces that can get great returns like a Chris Sale did or anything like that. They're just going to be entering this perpetual, you know, five, six-year rebuild where it's just they have nothing. That's a scary thought for Baltimore fans, especially because Washington Nationals are right there and they're always tearing it up. All right, let's move to the Toronto Blue Jays. Kind of the dark horse of the division, I think. There's just a lot riding on the health of the pitching staff. If their pitchers are healthy, the rotation, pretty solid, led by none other than Marcus Stroman. We all know how good he can be. We all know the potential that he has. We know what he's doing tonight. The message that he sends to all the youngsters out there, height doesn't measure heart. He's fought through so much right. adversity to get where what he is. What adversity does he face? He's a millionaire pitcher. He's, oh, I, I, I hate said it. the adversity that he faced to get where he is. Oh, God. The first first rounder ever selected out of the, the uh, Duke University. The torn ACL, fighting back, getting back in six months to he's pitch. He's also a douchebag. He's uh, the best pitcher on this team. He's a like, dark horse candidate for the AL Cy Young this year. Continue. He's a douchebag. Marco Estrada, J.A. Happ, Aaron Sanchez. They signed Jaime Garcia to be their fifth starter. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty solid rotation. If Aaron Sanchez can return to the form he was two years ago, he had some health problems last year. Basically, it's a lot of ifs. It's a lot of ifs, yes. And Troy Tulowitzki's almost never healthy. 
I mean, is Donaldson going to be hitting 40 and hit 120 RBIs? I think you can pencil him in for about 35 and 110. Josh Donaldson gets, doesn't get it. I mean, everyone talks about next offseason with, like, Manny Machado. Josh Donaldson does not get enough credit for how good of a fucking baseball player he is. Dude is a top five offensive player in all of baseball. It's fucking crazy. This team is just old. I mean, you look at Curtis is. Granderson is in left field. Yes. Justin Smoke, Kendry Morales, Russell Martin, Troy Tulowitzki is way past his prime. I mean, can Troy Tulowitzki even stand? Can we get someone to verify that Tulowitzki can still stand on two feet? I don't, I don't even know. I, I, mean, I don't know what's going on with in, as far as like injuries go. These insane. Days. They're bullpen. Basically, basically it, they would need one of those years where just everything fucking goes right because yeah. they don't have the talent in order to, you know, beat the Red Sox and the Yankees. They just don't right, right. now. And their bullpen is bad. Other than Roberto Azuna, who's a damn good closer, they have nothing else in the bullpen. So... There's a lot of work for them to do, but I think they can win 80-ish games, 75, 80-ish games. If everything goes right for them, who knows they can make a run at the wild card. I doubt it. I see them coming in third in the division in front of Baltimore. Oh, yeah. Very, and, uh, I would say very easily so. I'm just taking a quick look because they do have a really uh, really a top good top-heavy top heavy minor yeah. league system, seeing if any of these guys are close. I mean, you got you got guys like Vlad Guerrero Jr. Uh, and Bo Bichetti who are still in high A ball, so they're not getting much help there. They'll get some outfield help at some point with um, Anthony Alford, who is the number 44 ranked prospect in all of baseball. But you know your big bats, your Guerrero Jr. and your Bo Bichetti, they're they're going to be the replacements for Josh Donaldson and Troy Tulowitzki, respectively. Um, which you know that's that's nice to have, but they don't have much ready in terms of like ready to come up right now. Yeah, and Guerrero Jr. is going to be. Maybe just as good as his dad. I mean, he he his his bat is special. His MLB, pipe, special. MLB pipeline gave him a, a like a legitimate eighty tool, the best you can give. It's like getting hundred percent on a spelling test, man. It's as good as you can do. You know, <laughs> throwback. Uh, so like we said, ball, or, uh, Toronto in front of Baltimore in the AL East. Let's go to the bottom feeders in this division. It's Tampa Bay. It, th- this whole organization. Wait, whoa! You have Baltimore ahead of Tampa Bay? Uh, no, we already talked about Baltimore though. So we're going to the bottom feeders, like I said. Okay. To Tampa Bay. Okay. We already talked about this organization, you know, uh, a couple podcasts ago. Who we would move out of Florida to Montreal? Tampa Bay. I mean, this is just a shit show. They need to basically strip this whole thing down, trade Chris Archer, trade Kevin Kiermeyer. There's no point in holding on to anybody anymore. Honeywell, he's out for the year with the UCL. But you see the crazy thing with Tampa Bay, too, is that they have a top maybe five farm in baseball already, and if you were to trade Kiermeyer and Chris Archer... That's probably the best young core in baseball right there. Yeah. That they would have in the minor leagues. Um, I mean, it's a sure, it's like a shitty location for the team and all that stuff. They need a new stadium. I mean, they, they, need, they need a new city, but yeah. regardless. Yeah, they're not going to get much help in terms of um, reinforcements this year. Uh, their top two pitching prospects, Jose De Leon and Brent Honeywell, are, uh, are injured and done for the season. It looks like so they're not going to get much help in terms of the rotation, and they traded away um, Jake uh, Odorizzi. They traded away to the Minnesota Twins, so that just hurt their pitching depth even more. So it's essentially Chris Archer, and you know, Chris Archer. What Blake Snell can do, we'll see if he yeah. can keep progressing. He was regarded as one of the top prospects in baseball not too long ago, but why are you holding on to anything at this point? Kevin Cash, by the way, the manager of the Rays, done a damn good job with this team. They overachieved right. a lot last year. Yep. You pissed off your best player making all these moves with Dickerson and trading on Reezy, Kevin Kiermaier. Uh, yeah, getting rid of Dickerson's a questionable move, too. The dude was an all-star. All-star I mean, last even year, if he yeah. fell, Even if he falls off a little bit in the second half last year, which he did, that's still a solid player. I don't know why, if you think you're quote-unquote contending and you're going to bring up all these these farm system pieces that you have to help you condemn, would you get away with a guy who was an all-star last year? I don't understand. Yeah. All right. So just going through it one more time. In the AL East, we've got Boston, or excuse me, New York, Boston, Toronto, Baltimore, Tampa Bay. That's how we see it playing out. The Yankees take on the AL East. Let's move. Moving to Corey's division, the so, AL Central. His White Sox fall into this category, a very top-heavy division. Two teams going full on tank mode this year. Three teams. Three on well, three teams. The White Sox could surprise some people. You'll talk about it. But first, let's start with the cream of the crop. 2016 World Series, 2017 ALCS appearance. No ALDS. ALDS appearance, appearance. because they got reverse swept by the Yankees. Sick. The Cleveland Indians. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Fine. I didn't know how was going. Uh, yeah, Cleveland's gonna win this division. I don't care what anybody says about the Minnesota Twins. You're gonna be fucking wrong about it. I mean, uh, Corey Kluber. AL Cy Young Award winner last year leading that rotation. 
the rest of the rotation, you know, I fucking hate Trevor Bauer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor Bauer's in that rotation, but you got guys like uh, Carlos Carrasco in the rotation where you got uh, you got some injury concerns, um, but when they're on, they're a fucking lights out rotation. Um, you know, uh, they got a they have a really solid infield all around. You were talking about it before the show. You know, uh, Lindor is probably top three shortstop in the game right now. To be perfectly honest with you, and uh, yeah, right behind Javier Baez. Dude. Oh yeah, uh, Yomar Sanchez was just as good as Javier Baez last year. But um, yeah, no, the division, uh, the division around the diamond, they're really good in the infield, uh, led by Francisco Lindor. You know, uh, they still got they still got Brantley on left field, right? Yes. Yeah, let's see how many games he plays because you know that's not gonna work out. But and um, you know they got they got some young hitters uh, uh, like their top prospect Francisco Mejia, who they're trying out at different positions. Uh, so we could see you know some uh, some help come from the minor leagues, but. I don't think they're going to need it. You know, the Twins overachieved last year, and the Indians are basically going to beat up on three rebuilding teams in the division. So they're going to be a team that probably wins, you know, 95 to 100 games. And that's, that is what it is. The Indians are obviously a very, very good team, led by Corey Kluber, Cy Young Award winner. You can basically pencil him in to be top three in the AL Cy Young next year. The infield is so good. Jose Ramirez emerged as an MVP candidate last year. Mm -hmm. He can play third, he can play second, he can play short, he can play left field. I mean, that's just so valuable. He's going to hit over 300. He's got sneaky power to him, and he drives in a lot of runs. He gets on base a lot. And then, I mean, and then that bullpen, too. They got Andrew Miller and they got Cody Allen. I mean, yeah, the back end of the bullpen. That's a really good back end of your bullpen. It's very good. That's super important come playoff time. Huge question marks in Carrasco and Salazar on the rotation. Mm -hmm. What are they going to give you? That's really what it's going to come down to. I mean, the they, and same with Michael Brantley. Is he going to play? I mean, you never know with this guy. It, it's it's literally stupid how often he's hurt. Like, Which wow. is super unfortunate because when he's on, he's a, you he's know, the he's best a, hitter. He's an, he's at time was an MVP candidate in the American League, but you know, I, I mean, there's really not much to say about Cleveland Indians. They're just gonna they're gonna win that many games because they're they're not um, they're a good team. Clearly, they're one of the best teams in the American League. But I'm not ready to put them in as the favorite just based on win totals because they're beaten up on three rebuilding teams. Yeah, they've got uh, Zimmer, he's up now to go with Naquin in center field, kind of the young guys there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kipnis, Lindor, the, the scary thing about Lindor is he's still getting better. Like, he's still trending upwards. I, I mean, if if you're going to ask my opinion, I think he might be the best shortstop in the American League. I don't think anyone would argue with you on some, that. Some people like Carlos Correa a lot, you know. But regardless, you know. Best shortstop. And they bring in Alonzo. Carlos Santana is gone. He's in Philadelphia. Which Alonzo to go with, with, en yeah, with Encarnacion. So they've got the first base designated hitter. We'll see if Alonzo can keep up what he did last year. They, he changed up his swing and all of a sudden he had a career high in home runs by a long shot. Like He never hit more than like 16 home runs. He had like 20, 28 home runs last year. Mm -hmm. That's insane just to bring that up. Uh, but the pitching staff is what it's going to come down to. The offense is going to be there with guys like Ramirez, Lindor, Kipnis, and Carnacion. I mean, these guys are going to produce. They're also deep at catcher. Yeah, that too. I mean, Jan Gomes, Perez, and Mejia, who yeah. can flat out swing it. So yeah, and they're trying Mejia out at third base for some reason. I you got Jose Ramirez there. I don't know why you're trying him out at third base, but you know, I think that the questions with their rotation, you have more questions about the team that we. I'm assuming that we both think is going to finish in second place. Yeah, and we're going to move to them right now. The Minnesota Twins. We've got them slotted in at second place. But I think they can surprise some people. I really do. I mean, last last year, they make the wild card game. I don't think anybody in their right mind picked the Twins to make the wild card last year. Now they're a better team than they were last year. Is that is? Am I wrong? I mean, you got to factor in a lot of, like, they have, they're going to be without Urban Santana. I mean, Urban Santana. For a few weeks. He's already he's already had the surgery. It was eight to ten weeks, three weeks ago. So you got to figure out how he'll come back. Like end, of, end of April, early May. Somewhere in there. No, that's that he's going to be out a little longer than that because he's going to have to have rehab starts too and things like that. So okay, so he's probably middle missing, May, end of May? He's probably missing two good months. And by that time, Cleveland's going to be just walloping the shit out of people. Oh, walloping. The Twins play in the same division. They're going to play the same three bottom feeding teams. That the no, well, and that's, that's another thing too. That's per, that's probably why I'm, I think Minnesota also had an inflated win total last year too just because they're playing you know three shitty teams. If Byron Buxton continues to push forward. Yeah, that's the key. And that's super scary, <laughs> is By Byron Buxton. If he continues to progress with the bat, because he's the best defensive center fielder in baseball, and it's really not close, and he's got ridiculous speed, but if that bat comes 
through like everybody was expecting when he was by and away the number one prospect in all of baseball back in like 2014, 2015, then that's fucking scary. Then I'll buy it more because they'll have a legitimate superstar in center field. And Miguel Sano, I mean, Miguel Sano, if he's playing the full season... Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that in terms of the domestic violence charge against him. I mean, sure, he might be an asshole, but if he's playing right now... He can hit 40 playing. home runs. Yeah, he's a great third baseman. Yeah, and the rotation is better than it was last year. They added a reason. They signed Lance Lynn today. Berrios took a massive step forward last year. Mm -hmm. I had so many doubts about him last year. Yeah, you were picking him up in fantasy base. I'm like... Uh, this guy, he couldn't put it all together. I don't know if he could put it together. He might move to the bullpen. Proves me insanely wrong uh -huh. right off the bat. Turned it around. Now, he looks like he could be a bona fide ace. Have to see the jury still out for me. I want to see the consistency. And then that bullpen is bullpen's, interesting. Bullpen's bad. I mean, they it's brought in Anderson Reed. They it's got interesting. Tilted hat Fernando Rod. He's now the closer. If, if they really, How old is Fernando Rod? If they really want to compete, they need to add one to two bullpen pieces, whether now or... Yeah. Greg Holland's still available. Ring, ring, ring. Yeah, tr yeah. and let me just see. Fernando Rodney's fucking 40 years old. Oh, my God. But no, a guy, their big addition, Addison Reed, I watched him firsthand when he was with the White Sox, and... You know, he's a good bullpen piece. Uh, I don't think he's a guy you trust, you know, in a playoff situation to go grab you a save. And they don't have that guy. They're going to have to trade for that guy at some point. But, you know, uh, they do, they, again, they do have a really good uh, minor league system too, but some of the players are a little bit further away. So, you know, it's uh, it's where we're at. They're, they're the second place team. We've got the Twins coming in second. We've got Corey's White Sox coming yeah. in third here. Yeah, I got the White Sox finishing in third, not because I think they're, you know, a guaranteed 500 team or anything, but I think they're just so much better than the Kansas City Royals and the Detroit Tigers, who are going to be, quote-unquote, starting their rebuilds this year. Fire sales. Yeah, well, I mean, the Royals brought back fucking Mike Moustakas, which is... Interesting. Maybe they look to move him at the deadline. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. What's he's got that. Like. He's got that weird option after. Well, it's a mutual option, so that, yeah. I mean, the teams have security there. Yeah, that's true. But you know, the White Sox. I think they're going to start out really crappy for the first like fifty games until you get guys like Eloy Jimenez and Michael Kopech who are ready to come up, and then after that, you'll see a team that probably plays you know five hundred baseball for the rest of the year, which you know is a good step in the right direction for a rebuilding team. I think they're going to. Uh, take really good steps in terms of the rotation, like Lucas Giolito. I'm just on a Lucas Giolito high right now because he pitched really fucking well today against the Cubs, four innings, eight Ks. But uh, you know the rotation's got some young pieces. You know you're going to add the second wave of minor league prospects this year, and I just think they're going to be you know a third place team byproduct of the other two teams below them. A few X factors with the White Sox. Avi Garcia is going to be a huge question mark. Can he repeat what he did last year? Is he going to fall back to what he was previously? You know, being like a 260 hitter. Uh, the bullpen, can they can they flip some more arms like Nate Jones? Can they flip another guy for a decent prospect? And who's going to come up and when? I mean, yeah. are these prospects going to come up? How is it going to impact? How are they going to play? Is Munkata going to take a step forward? I mean, there's just so much here. I think because the bottom of this division is so bad, you can pencil them in for third right now. Yeah, I mean, they made some they made some key upgrades. You know, you got Wellington Castillo as a catcher who was, was a pretty damn good catcher last year. And, you know, it's a lot of... Uh, if you know, if questions, which is why it makes the team really interesting to watch. The biggest question mark being, will Tim Anderson ever unblock Corey on Twitter? He's never going to, and it makes me sad. Tim Anderson at Corey El Diablo on the, Twitter. It's the reason why I drink, to be honest, is because Tim just he won't unblock me, and it makes me sad. Wow, that's going really fucking dark right here. I love my shortstop, man. <laughs> he does not love you. Hey, but you know, at least you could, you know, follow him on the. Mom's Basement Twitter. Oh, now. trust me, I've been doing it. Speaking of the Mom's Basement Twitter, at Mom's Basement 18 on Twitter, let us know how many games you think the White Sox will win this season. See that plug? Look at that plug. seamless segue plug. Let us know what you think they're going to do. Opinions, unless your name is at Shy Sox Fan Mike, then we do not Yo, care. Yo, at Shy Sox Fan Mike gave us a follow again. He unblocked the Mom's Basement account just to follow it. He's probably listening to this right now. Hi, so, Mike. So, how Mike. you doing? Yeah, oh yeah. Hope you're I know we're in your head. It's really, it's really flattering. You know, Thank what... what, what we got to get him on the show and get him a sit down. Oh, no, it was actually a tweet. I don't know if you guys saw it, but a response to one of the polls I think Matt put up was, how about celebrity guest at Shy Sox fan Mike? Wait, who said that? Uh, the real CK. I remember that poll. I didn't read anything into it. So, so is, that, is that one of the bot accounts, I'm guessing? No, 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 no. This is a real person, actually. Oh, oh wait, that's the Kenwood dude, right? Yeah, it's, yeah it's, there we go. It's Chris okay. Crowell from Kenwood, oh, okay. like, from Homerland. Yeah. Nice plug. <sighs> Anywho, moving on to fourth and fifth place. And yeah, <laughs> this this is the biggest shit show I can remember. Oh, it's where it's where it falls off. And uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Royals in fourth place just because yeah. it's you're really picking you know you're just you're just picking out one win versus like one team's gonna have 60 wins one team's gonna have 59 wins or something like that you know Mike Moustakis might give them the slight edge in terms of finishing fourth place I guess I mean it's a, they're both shitty teams I, I don't know oh they're so bad and and uh, Bonifacio of the Royals today just got suspended for 80 games for PED so or his Solaire. I don't know I don't know if you saw it but the Kansas City Royals have a pornography problem. Um, yeah, so... I don't like your favorite team. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, so for those who don't know, uh, the Kansas City Royals made all their players sit through a presentation on why porn is bad or some bullshit, which is fucking hilarious. Welcome back to CCD in seventh grade. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seriously, that's what this is. My mom never let me watch that video they tried to show us. I had to sit in the classroom at CCD by myself while every other kid went to see the video. Did you go to CCD? No, I wasn't. Yeah, Catholic. You were in Catholic school. Yeah. Did you go to CCD? Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 Wait, is CCD a Catholic thing or not? It's like after school once a week you got to yeah. go and some teacher who they pay money to like teach no, you how to book. It or wasn't even a teacher. It was like a parent. Yeah, or a, a parent who didn't give a shit about. Well, what they I were went. Doing. To, I went to Catholic school. I don't remember if they did anything with showing us videos or not to not watch porn or whatever the fuck it was. I was too worried about other things that happened in Catholic school that I was trying to avoid. <laughs> Are you trying to expose something? This is, yeah. this is going very south very quick well, here. Well, it continued into my high school. All, all I'll say is my I went to Catholic high school. The dude who uh, was the president of our Catholic high school just had to step down because of photos on his phone. That's all I'll say. Moving on to the Royals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this team, your, your best hitter is Mike Moustakis. So Jorge Soler who is playing in the outfield. Alex Gordon's out of his prime. It's better, it's better Jorge Soler's in the outfield than he's like sitting on PS4 all day. Jason Hamill's in your rotation. Yeah, <laughs> when Jorge Soler is posting Instagram stories from the AAA uh, uh, clubhouse last year while Wade Davis was just making saves for the Cubs. Yeah. It's a... Okay. It's the O's league. I, I'm, okay, stop that. <laughs> that irritates me so fucking much. Stop fucking saying that. Fuck. <laughs> Dom, or whatever the fuck his name is. Is he Frederick? Is he Dom? I don't give a fuck what he is. Well, he is the director of morale for If he stepped in front of an 18-wheeler, the world would be a better place right now. That, uh, that rainbow screen that goes up on TV just went up in front of you while you were saying that, so it never got in. Um, Anywho, do we, like, no, I mean, do we really need to talk anything else about the Royals and the Tigers? They're going to be the last two fucking finishes. No, yeah, this is all I'll say. Bottom of the division, division, Detroit Tigers, they might win 56 games. It's the fallout of Dave Dombrowski. This is what he does to organizations. Yeah, and I just mean, fucking decimates you, you, I, I've, I've said it before. I respect what Dave Dombrowski does for certain organizations because he tries to maximize their window to win. But then when he's done, they're just gutted. <laughs> they have no young talent left. And the Tigers are actually building a semi-decent farm, but they're not anything overly impressive right now. You know, it's going to be a, just a long rebuild process for both these teams. Moving to the most intriguing division, in my opinion, in the American League, the AL West, which holds the defending champion, Houston Astros. Uh, and they got better. And it's rare to say for a World Series so champion. fucking crazy. We were talking about this. The Angels, who, spoiler, I'm having the Angels finishing in second place. I think Joey will, too. The Angels are good enough to probably win 90 games, and they might finish 15 games back in that's that division. Wild. I mean, that's fucking crazy. The Astros add Garrett Cole, former Pittsburgh Pirates ace. He's going to be their three, probably. That's so good. Lance McCullers is a very good young pitcher. He's going to be the four. Charlie Morton, a very solid five. Justin fucking Verlander. They don't win the World Series last no. year. Justin Verlander. No. And they made that trade literally in minutes before the playoff lock. Yeah. For rosters. Yeah. What is it? What is it? The non waiver or waiver yeah. or whatever? How huge is. of a move. That was that? that was an amazing move for them. And you know what? I gotta give them credit because I was on the trade for Jose Quintana uh, bandwagon for the Houston Astros last year because I love Kyle Tucker and um, what is it? Forrest Whitley, who just got suspended. But you know they were, they were did a really good job. They were patient and they got Justin Verlander for just a really fucking good deal. There's just studs all over the diamond. Correa, Altuve, Bregman, Springer. I mean, McCann can still hit. Gaddis can hit. Marvin Gonzalez was very good in the playoffs last oh, yeah. year. He should take a step forward. They're going to win probably 103 to 105 games. In yeah, that's opinion. crazy. They're, they're well managed, too. Yeah, AJ Hinch doing a phenomenal job. If Ken Giles can step back into being a really dominant reliever, mm -hmm. that's going to be just the, the icing on the cake. <sighs> You like that swirl? Not at all. Matt right now is pictured me just taking whipped cream out of the uh, can before the show. I don't want to know what the hell you two do with whipped cream, but we're just going to move forward from that. All right. Jesus this Christ. team is just flat out stacked, and they're deep, too. I mean, you got guys who can play on the, uh, everywhere on the diamond, like Gonzalez, and they got Tony Kemp, who's a pretty good... And you know, you know, if they rush him, if they rush him just a little bit, my favorite prospect, who is now in the White Sox, Kyle Tucker... Should be up for the Astros at some point this year because he just fucking is tearing he's up spring training. Spring training right he's now. hitting like 500 in spring training. He's tearing up double A ball. 
Just watch. It's going to happen. Oh. All my haters who doesn't don't like Kyle Tucker in the White Sox chat, catch these real quick. Okay? Catch <laughs> these. That's going to be a gift. <laughs> I actually would love that as a gift. Oh, my God. I would use it more than you use the uh, not this time, Tim, yeah, for what I <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Tim. That, yeah, I don't think so, Tim. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> okay. Right. Now, moving who we think is going to finish second in the division, the uh, Los Angeles Angels. They made okay, a lot right. of moves this spring. Yeah, that's the most confusing team. Oh, I hated it so much. I think they did it like right after 2004 or something like that. I fucking hated it so much. But uh, anywho, spoiler alert: they still have the best player in baseball. And anybody who says Mike Trout, like I've seen, I've seen the the MLB Network does their ranking of center fielders. Some dude had Mike Trout third. That's fucking ridiculous. Mike Trout is to the is, is to the MLB what fucking LeBron is to the NBA. Not it's even not even close. Mike Trout does everything better. Who than Who did he have number one? Oh god. Um, center fielder for the Rockies, Blackman. Is it Blackman? Blackman? Well, he had the career year and Trout was hurt, so I mean, he's probably just going off of last year. But ridiculous either way. Oh. I mean, Trout missed some time and still was getting, like, MVP consideration. Well, yeah, because it's crazy. I think they show, like, his per, like, 162 when you factor in his injury and stuff like that. His war is just ridiculous. So the Angels, they brought in Ian Kinsler from Detroit. Good move. They brought in Cozart from Cincinnati. Good move. They've got the best defensive shortstop in the game in Simmons. Great. They've re-signed Justin Upton. They already have Trout, Calhoun, the big uh, Japanese, Shohei Otani. Yeah. He's there. He's going to be their ace. And designated hitter Pools. Spoiler alert: He can still mash the baseball. Oh yeah, you can. He can still hit thirty, driving a hundred. He's that good still. Now in the field, wouldn't put him out there if he was on a golf cart. Just wouldn't. Do it. <laughs> like if there's a golf cart blocking balls behind him in case, no, I'm not putting I him mean, on the field. They made. I mean, they don't have to make. They made the flashy signing of the offseason with the signing of the top international free agent. They did in Shohei Otani, but I mean, they're they're a damn good ball club. I mean. It's it's unfortunate that they have the Astros in front of them. If the pitching stays healthy, they're winning ninety games. Yeah, and, and they're you know, going to compete for a while. Shohei Otani is just super intriguing for me. You know, I want to see how he hits. I think he's going to be a better pitcher than he is a hitter. I already see him being just stomped at the plate. Like, you see the well, that was Kershaw. The Kershaw. That was I saw Kershaw. I saw a couple. I don't remember who the other guy was. But I've seen a couple, but Kershaw made him look like a fucking fool. Yeah, I mean, literally like a tool up there, just yeah. Dominating. And right now, Shohei Otani, I believe, is the number one prospect in all of baseball, so he's not going to prospect. He's also playing with the with the strain of the sprain in the UCL. He's playing with a UCL sprain, which is just a twist. That is so dangerous. I don't like any of this. Dangerous. Just, might give me some bass behind. I don't like any of this. I don't like any. <laughs> fucking, I hate the bullpen so fucking much right now. You know, so I, would, if you're an Angels fan, I would watch this carefully. This is a dangerous, dangerous path to go down. He could tear this UCL. I mean. He could, he could slightly tear it. Anything could happen to that arm. Yeah, if you tear a UCL, it's very dangerous. It's, a, it's a huge setback for him. It's not the end of his career or anything, but the pitching needs to stay healthy. I mean, Skaggs hasn't been healthy. Schumacher, man, Garrett Richards hasn't been able to stay on the field. If they're not on the field, I mean, this team could win 70 games. But if the pitching oh, yeah. is good, they're going to win 90 games. There's no in between. They're either mm-hmm. going to be a uh, huge disappointment, and Los Angeles is going to freak out, and Social's probably going to lose his job. Or. They're going to win 90 games, compete for a wild card, maybe push into the ALDS, but that's about their ceiling for me. Yeah. The rest of the uh, old Western division, I, I really only want to talk about the Mariners. Because every you goddamn have, you year. Have a problem with the Mariners. This is the Mariners organization being the offseason. Oh, here he is again. There's Joe. Yeah, let's have a. Reel him back in. They fucking reel me in every year with all these moves. They make so many moves, and I'm like, damn, this looks so good to me. And then they just shit the bed. It, it's just. I look like an idiot every time. I think last year I picked them to make the playoffs. Yikes. I mean, they, 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 they seem like one of those sexy teams that you pick every year just because, you know, you see, you know, King Felix there. And what look at the that. middle of their lineup. Seager, Cruz, Cano. That's, that's ballers. Yeah. Straight up ballers. They added D. Gordon. He's going to play center. That is going to be a disaster, I think. But as a leadoff hitter, yeah, D. Gordon's, he's going to steal 50 bases. Yeah. He's going to be on base. He's going to score a ton of runs because of the guys behind him. Now the rotation. Felix, not an ace anymore. He's, he's so, a two at best. That's so sad. He threw so many ends. I always put him in the same category as Chris Sale, where he's just like this fucking amazing pitcher on a shit team. I mean, Suck Chris Sale, yeah. I mean, well, yeah. For, Let's, but, I mean, I'm, I had no problem trashing the previous White Sox teams, but I mean, and now he's just, you know, he's got so many innings on that fucking arm. He's taking a step back, but I mean... He's a two at best. And then, and here's, here's my... You know, when we do the award show later on in a couple weeks here, James Paxson is my pick to win the AL Cy Young. I'm going to bowl right, with this. I need a drink. He's that good. 
Uh, he's going to take over as the ace. Matt's got a cup for you. Uh, there's some Ciroc in the basement. Uh, he's going to take over as the ace. I wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pull. I'm not doing anything. Of the Seattle Mariners, he's going to have a gotcha. solid year. As long as he's healthy, he can win 16, 17, 18 games. Good ERA, good fit. A lot of K's. You act like Chris Hill just doesn't exist. You act like Corey Kluber just doesn't exist. I'm going bold with this. Yeah. James Paxton. There's a difference between bold and stupid. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. All right. The Mariners' bullpen is sneaky, underrated. they got some good arms it's with their closer, Evan Diaz, as well, who's just a flamethrower. They could they could surprise some people. I am not going to put them in the playoffs. They're going to finish third in this division because they get to beat up on the Oakland Athletics, who... A lot of people don't even remember. He's an actual baseball organization, yes. Billy Bean got a promotion after trading Addison Russell. Trading. It's a yikes. <laughs> and he traded Josh Donaldson. Josh Donaldson. He gone. Sonny Gray. He gone. He got a uh, promotion. And here we sit, Mom's basement. But it is what it is. You know, you gotta deal with what you're doing. I don't even know what's happening. I mean, Moneyball was a good movie. Moneyball, great movie. Yeah, just uh, the A's, really bad team, really bad organization. And, and the Texas, Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers. I think it says here they're doing a, trying to work out like a six man rotation this year. The Texas Rangers. Yeah, I mean, and they brought in Big Sexy. They brought in Tim Lincecum. Yeah. It's not 2010. It, it, Big Sexy. Not I mean, 2010, 2012. I mean, yeah, 2012. Tim Lincecum was just the fucking bomb, but now he's just he not. was the freak, just dominant. Love, I love Tim Lincecum, but yeah, I mean, he's just not. Gonna... I'm looking at Joey Gallo right now, and I'm just like, remember when everyone thought Joey Gallo would be the centerpiece for a Chris Hale trade? Adrian he's Beltre is ancient. Ends. Mazar is a stud. Odor's a stud. Uh, Gallo, he's Adam Dunn. Uh, Willie Calhoun, he's Kyle Schwarber. We've already discussed Yeah, Willie, Willie Calhoun is like a shorter Kyle Schwarber. Shin Chu is still collecting a massive paycheck to be an average. No player. fucking shit. Yep. I didn't realize Shin Chu was still in baseball. The rotation is decent with Hamels, Matt Moore. They brought in Mike Meyer as well. I mean, just... It's nothing sexy. Like, they're going to be average. They're going to finish fourth in the division, only because Oakland is that bad. You know, I'm doing a really bad job on this preview show of keeping up with the prospects on there. There we go. Yeah, Willie Calhoun, um, we talked about. Willie Calhoun is was their big acquisition for Hugh Darvish. I'm so excited to see how he just fucking rakes. Cause that dude he is, can hit. That dude is super tiny. He's like my height. He's like five foot fucking eight or something like that. Yeah, he's legit five foot eight. But the dude just fucking rakes. And I don't remember if it was like 2011 or 2012, but like I, I remember going back and reading an article because one of the guys that I'm, one of my buddies, Jason, is from Texas. He's a huge Ranger fan. Mm -hmm. And we were going back, and he's got the accent. Like, yeah, I remember reading about Yerkes and Profar being the next best, der next Derek yeah, Jeter. What the fuck happened to that? Like, like 2011, 2012, and you just look at back, like best prospects 2011, and Yerkes and Profar was number one. Yeah, and that's why prospects scare boy, me. Boy, has the legs from that table been swept out by some wrestler that Matt likes and just destroyed? I gotta give him some. So, yeah, uh, Texas in fourth. Oakland, they're garbage. They're going to be in fifth. I mean, they only had Sonny Gray left. Chris Davis is still there. Uh, surprise. He's still going to be, you know, one of the best left fielders in the game. He's going to hit 35, 40 bombs. He is second to Giancarlo Stanton only in home runs in the last two seasons. Interesting. Under, underrated player there in Oakland. Yeah, and then Oakland's got a really good farm too, but just th this year's not the year. They, can, they don't have, like I said this about uh, San Diego, Tampa Bay, they don't have the market. There's no market to support them. You need the farm, you also need the timely free agent acquisitions. You and no, one, no one's going to Oakland. And it's very, very tough to do both. I mean, you see teams like Tampa Bay with Joe Madden at the helm, moving the chessboard around, doing that, all the, the great stuff with the young guys able to get to the World Series, but it's a one, two year window, like Kansas City, a one to two year window, and then it's done. You gotta start all over and try again for the best case scenario. Okay. All right, that wraps up the American League. We did the East, we did the Central, we did the West. We're gonna do a separate episode for the NL because we ran pretty long in the American League, a lot to talk about. Uh, thank you so much for watching, listening, whatever it may be. As always, this is Mom's Basement. Follow us on Twitter at Mom's Basement 18. Follow me on Twitter at Joe underscore Frank 01. Follow Corey. At Corey El Diablo. Make sure you don't leave this channel without hitting that big subscribe button. Leave that five star review on iTunes. And we'll see you guys next time.